Chapter 10 Oh! I froze in panic. Even with my blurred B vision, I could see the deep treads in the tire as it rolled steadily toward me. Closer. Closer. I have to move, I told myself. Fly away! Fly away! But in my panic, I forgot how to use my new muscles. I... I'm going to be squashed, I realized. I uttered a final, weak cry. And the car stopped. Huh? My entire body was trembling, but somehow I managed to pull myself up, up into the air. Yes, I was flying now. I could see Miss Carmen inside the car. She was fastening her seatbelt. She had stopped the car but to find the seatbelt. Hey, seatbelts really do save lives, I told myself. I called out to her, but of course she couldn't hear me. I watched the car roll away until it was a blur of color. Then, exhausted and terrified, I buzzed over to a nearby live bush, <clears throat> excuse me, live bush, sorry, and dropped onto a leaf. That was too close, I told myself, in between gasps of air. I'm going to get killed out here. A green caterpillar inched its way up onto a nearby stem and started chewing noisily on the leaf as I was resting on. I'd never really examined a caterpillar before. Up close, they're really ugly. They look a little bit like dragons, only scarier. Keep away from me, I yelled in my tiny voice. The caterpillar didn't even turn his head. Maybe it didn't hear me. I forgot all about the caterpillar when I heard footsteps coming up the front walk. I turned my head and used my sideways eye to see who it was. Mom, I screamed. Mom, over here. She couldn't hear me. She hurried up the steps into the house. Suddenly, I was overcome by a wave of sadness. My own mother didn't recognize me. Desperately, I fluttered my wings and flew away from the leaf. I made my way to the front of the house and started buzzing around the front windows. I had my wings under complete control by now, but the scene I saw inside the house was enough to make me fall down to the ground again. My mother stood in the living room talking to me, or at least that's what she thought. Only I knew it couldn't be me. I was stuck outside, but who was in there with my mom? Had Dirk Davis managed to get inside my body? I landed on the ledge and stared into the house. My mom was talking. The boy was nodding and laughing. He said something to her. If I stared closely, I could read his lips. Hey, did you buy taco chips? I'm really starving, Mom. That had to be Dirk talking inside my body. My mom smiled at him and patted him on the arm. I read his lips and saw that he was calling her mom again. How could he do that? How could he call my mother mom? If bees could cry, which I know now they can't, I would have started bawling right now and then. Then and there. Who would that boy think he was? For that matter, what kind of mom did I have, who couldn't even tell that a total stranger was living inside her son's body? As I watched myself and my mom chatting in the living room, I totally lost it. Like a crazed maniac, I started bashing my inside body into the window. Buzz, I cried. Buzz, buzz, buzz. It's me, Gary. Look out here. Help me. Again and again, I smashed myself up against the glass, but no one inside the house noticed. After a few minutes, my bug knew me a bag of taco chips. I watched Gary rip the bag open and take out a handful of chips. Crumbs fell on the living room carpet as he crunched the spicy chips. I realized I was starving. What do bees eat? I asked myself. Desperately, I tried to remember everything I never read about the creatures. I thought the hungry caterpillar crunching away on the leaf, but I was almost positive bees don't didn't eat leaves. But what did they eat? Other bugs? Ugh. The thought of that made me shudder. I'd die before I ate a bug. I buzzed around the yard, hoping to see something, anything I could use for food. As I flew, I found that I was getting used to my strange new vision and learning how to work my different sets of eyes. I remember something I read once read in an old picture book called The Big Book of Bees. It said that bee eyes each have thousands of tiny lenses crowded together, but because they don't have pupils, they can't really focus their eyes. Interesting, I thought, but not very helpful. If I could remember about bees' eyesight, why can I remember what they ate? I settled onto another bush to think, and suddenly I became aware of a wonderful odor nearby. I turned my head and saw a beautiful yellow flower. Then I remembered something else I'd read. Pollen! 
I said out loud. Bees eat pollen and they get it from flowers. Excitedly, I flew up into the air and started hovering over the yellow blossom. I tried to open the, my mouth before I remember I didn't have that kind of mouth anymore. Instead, I had my long, weird tongue. I was supposed to get used to, excuse me, I was supposed to use to get the stuff out of the flower. I didn't have a clue. As I hummed around in the air, I realized I was becoming more and more exhausted. If I didn't get something to eat soon, I was going to faint. I started to feel dizzy. I hardly knew where I was. I became more and more confused. My brain got so fuzzy, I even began to wonder if I'd ever actually be a boy at all. Maybe I'd really been a bee for my entire life, and I just dreamed about being a boy. Slam! Somebody closed the car door nearby, and I was startled out of my mental fog. I swiveled up my head to look. Dad! He was closing the garage door. Now he was walking across the driveway and heading toward the back door of the house. Dad! I screamed. Dad, it's me! Gary, help me! Hi, Gary, Dad said. Chapter 11. Next one, guys.